Templars might have deeper pockets than us, but they've got no ambition, no passion, no competitive edge. That's why, even with all their resources, anything they can do, I can do better. Faster, too. Rebecca Crane, 2012. Hello, and welcome to Visions of the Past. My name is Andrew, and I'm the host of this Assassin's Creed lore podcast. This is episode 45, and today, we're going to talk about Rebecca Crane. Before we get into Rebecca's history with an Assassin's Creed, we're going to look at the meaning behind her name. The name Rebecca stems from the Hebrew Rivka, which itself comes from the root word that means to tie firmly. In the Old Testament, Rebecca is the wife of Isaac and the mother of Jacob and Esau. Her last name, Crane, as a surname, originates from the Middle Dutch word crane, the Old English words cran, cron, and kren, along with the German crane or kranik. These all referred to the bird that is called the crane and may have been a nickname for a tall, gangly, or long-legged person. Within the Assassin's Creed universe, Rebecca is a popular character who appears in many stories, books, and games. Her first appearance is in Assassin's Creed II, where she was voiced by Eliza Jane Schneider. Eliza reprised the role in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, Assassin's Creed Revelations, Assassin's Creed III, Assassin's Creed IV Black Flag, and Assassin's Creed Syndicate. The character of Rebecca also appeared in the Assassin's Creed Initiate websites and the novel Assassin's Creed The Last Descendants, Tomb of the Khan. She is also announced to be in the Tokyo 21 expansion of the board game, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice. Rebecca was born on February 3rd, 1984, but not much else is known about her before she joined the Assassin Brotherhood. What is known is that Rebecca was into extreme sports like snowboarding and skydiving. Fortunately, she broke her leg, but used the opportunity to learn computer code, going so far as to explain it later to be as exhilarating as the sports she used to partake in. The exact date of Rebecca's recruitment into the Assassin Brotherhood is unknown, but sometime after she was recruited, she was responsible for bringing in Sean Hastings. Sean had found some secrets of Abstergo Industries and decided that he was going to post them to news groups in an attempt to spread the word on them. Rebecca tried to warn Sean of the danger, but wasn't able to sway him to stop. Because he tried to expose Abstergo's secrets, Rebecca was forced to swoop in and save his life before Abstergo found him. By September 9, 2012, the two were working in an assassin's cell within Rome, Italy. Rebecca was serving as technical support for the Animus within the Rome cell when Lucy Stillman broke Desmond Miles out of Abstergo's Animus project. When they arrived to the Roman hideout, Lucy would give Rebecca the memory core from the Abstergo's Animus, to which Rebecca integrated enthusiastically. This memory core secretly contained files that were encrypted by Clay Kazmarek and were secretly hidden within the memories of Ezio Auditore da Firenze. As Desmond relived Ezio's memories to train as an assassin, Rebecca ran the Animus, often making notes and database entries that Sean created when Desmond ran across locations that had Clay's encrypted files, or assassin tombs. When Desmond did come out of the Animus, he would talk to Rebecca about the assassins and his progress within the Animus itself. Rebecca even told Desmond that he was a natural working with it. On September 15th, Desmond found a warning that Minerva left for him in Ezio's life, moments before Abstergo found and broke into the hideout. While Desmond and Lucy fought off Abstergo, Rebecca and Sean packed as much equipment as they could into a van to escape. Rebecca even got the Animus to work in the van itself, so Desmond could continue exploring Ezio's memories while they were on the move. The next day, the team arrived at Monteregioni and gained access to the sanctuary of the Villa Auditore. It was Rebecca's task to get the Animus up and running, but to do this, she had Desmond siphon power from the city with little devices of her own creation. During the team's time at Monteregioni, Rebecca informed Lucy of Desmond shouting in his sleep. She would even have some time to talk to Desmond about if she had ever been in the Animus, to which she stated that she spent her time as a Prussian mercenary, spending her time shooting guns, and that it was boring. On October 10, 2012, the team would head back to Rome to receive Ezio's Apple of Eden from the Colosseum Vault. While Desmond found his way through the Colosseum itself, Lucy took Rebecca and Sean through an alternate route through Capitoline Hill at Sean's suggestion 
as Rebecca and Sean didn't have the necessary abilities to reach the apple's location. When Desmond retrieved the apple, he was possessed by Juno and was presented with a vision with what would happen if Lucy was left alive. This vision influenced Desmond to kill Lucy with his hidden blade and then caused him to fall into a coma. While Desmond was in his coma, Rebecca kept an eye on his vitals as he was placed inside her animus, even though Rebecca cautioned that the animus wasn't built to sustain a comatose mind. Desmond woke from this coma on October 30th, 2012, to find that the cell had already been relocated to upstate New York, based on information Desmond's father, William, saw while Desmond was in his coma and reliving memories of Ezio. After entering the Grand Temple, Desmond would be forced into another fugue state and put back into the Animus, where Rebecca would be by his side again. After Desmond retrieved a Grand Temple power source on November 16th, Rebecca asked him if it was weird seeing Templar agent Daniel Cross during his mission. The conversation led to Rebecca revealing that she didn't know Cross, but she did know Hannah Mueller, and that after what Abstergo did to Cross, how Mueller had tried to turn him away from them, resulting in Cross killing her. While Desmond was in the Animus looking for the key to the Grand Temple, Rebecca continued her work on the Animus, while helping Sean to hunt down other power sources. On December 20th, 2012, Rebecca was by Desmond's side when he found the Grand Temple key, until Desmond told William, Sean, and Rebecca to leave the temple to save themselves on the next day. Once they had left, Desmond touched the global Aurora Borealis device, saving the world at the cost of his life. Sometime in 2013, the assassins decided on a mission to recover what they could of Desmond's body and figure out what Abstergo was doing with his DNA. This led Rebecca to going undercover at Abstergo Entertainment in Montreal as a data courier. During this time, the assassin's inside man was revealed as John Standish, a follower of Juno who wanted to find a body for her. After John was killed trying to help Juno out of the gray, Rebecca reached out to the analyst that collected the data for the assassins, claiming that if the analyst wanted to continue their project, that they were willing as well. On December 2, 2013, Rebecca emailed Gavin Banks and informed him about John Standish's death with the intention to leave Montreal in order to analyze the information that they had gathered and plan their next move. By May of 2014, Rebecca and Sean would be back with William in his bunker in Norway. The Altair II, a trawler-type ship that the assassins use as a mobile headquarters, docked there around that time, allowing for Rebecca to perform maintenance on the Hephaestus email network. While performing this maintenance, she discovered numerous coded spy reports that were sent to something called the Initiates database. This discovery would lead to Rebecca and Sean to determining where the messages were being sent while William interrogated the crew in an attempt to find the spy on the ship. Eventually, Rebecca found the group known as the Initiates and convinced both William and the leader on the Altair II, Gavin Banks, that the group was reasonable and to spare the exposed spies, Eric Cooper and Stephanie Chu. The two spies then showed Rebecca the Initiates' secret satellite network, which they dubbed the Outer Net. She was impressed, and then was tasked by William to recruit the Initiates. By November of 2014, both Rebecca and Sean were working with the Initiates. By October 24, 2015, Sean and Rebecca were working with Bishop, and on that day, she tasked them to infiltrate Isabel Ardant's office in London, to search for what piece of Eden that Abstergo was searching for. The pair disregarded orders and sat in the office to wait for Ardant's return. When Ardant did return, she was not alone, and they were ambushed by Otto Berg and Violet da Costa. They were able to escape, though, via a planted explosion. Making it to an abandoned warehouse, Bishop informed them that the initiate that had helped shift through Arno Dorian's memories had identified the artifact as the Shroud of Eden, Bishop also agreed to send the pair back up and told them to lay low until it arrived and to allow the initiate to gather more data on the shroud. The backup shortly arrived in the form of Galina Voronina after the initiate found the final resting place of the shroud beneath Buckingham Palace. The trio made their way there to find the Templars had arrived first. This led to a fight where Sean assassinated Ardant and Rebecca would save his life by taking a bullet that Violet shot at him. Sigma team eventually showed up, requiring the assassins to flee. Violet escaped with a shroud, but the assassins would escape with their lives, and Eric Cooper would extract Sean and Rebecca from London.
Sometime in 2016, Rebecca had recovered from her wound and would be back as an active duty field agent. Setting up in an abandoned house, she built a new animus from blueprints and parts that Sean retrieved from the Abstergo Foundation Rehabilitation Center in Madrid. Later that year, she was joined by a cell of assassins that had escaped a Templar raid on their safe house. She then assisted one of the assassins, Owen Myers, in reliving the memories of his Chinese ancestor, Zhang Zi, as they searched for pieces of the Trident of Eden until she was forced to leave on her own mission. Rebecca is often seen as one of the linchpins of the modern-day story of Assassin's Creed, appearing in multiple games for over six years. In most of her appearances throughout the series, she has been seen with Sean Hastings, to the point that at times it seems strange to see one without the other. They do have a lot of fun banter between each other, most notably in Assassin's Creed II and Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. My favorite of which comes in Brotherhood, where after explaining how she enjoyed coding as much as she did jumping from a helicopter, Sean told her to get her adrenal glands checked, as that was not normal. Even though she is often seen with Sean, that doesn't make her any less important. Without Rebecca, Desmond would not be able to get through his time in the Animus, as her expertise in the systems of the Animus kept him as safe as could be with that kind of machine. She has an outgoing personality, but even so has a serious side to her, especially when it came to her team's safety. It's this personality and her memorable lines that drew me to the character. It's hard to think of Assassin's Creed without her, or what kind of character Sean would be without her to speak to. Some will notice that I did not mention Rebecca's appearance in the first Assassin's Creed comics, but that's more to do with the validity of its canosity than anything that she did within that series. There is also a rumor that she has a part to play in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. While I couldn't find a reputable source to confirm it, I did see Eliza Jane Schneider was listed on IMDb to reprise the role of Rebecca in Valhalla, and I won't be surprised to see her show up, or at least mentioned in passing or an email, as Rebecca has been announced to be part of the Tokyo 21 expansion of Assassin's Creed, Brotherhood of Venice. Thank you for joining me today. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday for new episodes. If you love the Visions of the Past podcast, I'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and give a review on Apple Podcasts. If you have any questions about Assassin's Creed or topics that you'd like me to cover, please feel free to hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at visions underscore AC, and you can find those links in this episode's show notes. Until next time, my assassin friends, make sure to follow the creed, and to those Templars listening, may the Father of Understanding guide you. Mm-hmm.